Okay, next is telecom grade, $5 a kilo, so a pretty good grade. Um, when I think of telecom, I think of a board like this. So it's it's just a, a, a blank board with all IC chips. Very little rubbish, like you got a, just a couple of tiny little copper coils, um, no capacitors, transformers. So this is, you know, a classic telecom grade board. So I can see here that they cut off the fingers. Um, even though the fingers are cut off, it's still a telecom grade board because it's all about the chips. Okay, so that's uh, a good start on telecom just to uh, see how as soon as I look at that or a buyer looks at that, that should be telecom grade. Okay, but obviously boards aren't all alike, so it really does vary. And I think from the same system, um, I've showed you some of these that were graded at high grade. Um, these are a little bit better um, and they've just passed for telecom grade, even though they're not spectacular. Or, um, oh, but they are still pretty good, well populated IC chips and really not much rubbish again. So, yep, that passes as telecom grade. Okay, so it's technically again had fingers cut off, so it was one of those boards that slide into you know a, a network communication system or something like that, but a little bit more vintage, you know, and then just variations. So this one here, it's really not telecom. Sometimes I'll let them slip in because of a lot of IC uh, chips, but all over this side, this is all power board stuff, you know. There are a few IC chips in here, but this is, you know, you can see all the copper coils and all that, and that's the kind of stuff that we're trying to avoid on telecom boards, but you know you can't um not every every board's going to be different so some boards are going to be like this and in this case I, i'll pass this as telecom uh some buyers might not but you know we're just talking about how i grade boards and not how people grade boards all over the world um here's another one that's uh, still passes as telecom because it has a lot of ic chips even though all these removable ic's um, they most likely would have already, um, the scrapper might have removed them before he sold the board, um, which is usually the case. Um, you know, uh, be nice if they left a few just so, you know, to ensure that it's going to be telecom grade because they are risking. If it had a few less IC chips here, they were, uh, this would have been downgraded almost down to uh, just high grade. Uh, because of all the removed IC chips. You know, and again, same kind of deal, a little bit less again, but it passed. Then going to the more modern telecom grade, so that's... Right, so the camera is really playing up, so I'm just have to go through this a little bit quicker. Again, another sample of a telecom. Um, it's got a lot of dead weight here. Um, even these those pulse things copper kind of like transformers dead weight so it's all about these chips here but still um, yep I can class this as telecom other examples so you got Cisco 3com they're very common um, yep so even though it does have heavy weight the chips over you know sort of overvalue the the down weight so um, another example something a bit more vintagey uh, even though there's you know all these kind of things they're just all diodes so there's like a hundred diodes here there's no real value here and here but you know we have you know because it's slightly vintage and it's all mostly chips we can bring it up a little bit more modern um, just passes as a telecom because it is a telecom kind of board because it doesn't have much rubbish much of the the copper or capacitors and stuff like that uh if we remove this um heat sink you you need to remove but uh and there's a bga under there even though this bga here these are the very low grade virtually no gold recovery so you can forget them 
Um, so here's another example. It's the same board. Now, because it's got this big heat sink, I can't see the main chip. And this would downgrade it. So take off this heat sink, make it look like that. And then we've got a, um, a server board. Sorry, did I say server? I meant uh, telecom. Another version of a telecom board. So just looks like a basic board, but it's very heavily populated with IC chips, nothing else. So I can grade this as telecom. Another kind of board. It helps because these chips are still inside. If you remove them out of there, it's starting to drop it down. But um, this one is still reasonably good for telecom grade. Almost, well, it is a slot card, but in this case, it, you know, it did have fingers that they've cut off. But even though um, this would have always been uh, worth more than just slot card value. So this should be always telecom. Even though they've cut off the fingers, it's still a telecom grade. Little rubbish that the only thing you would have to do, because it's no longer a slot card, you should take off this bracket. Okay, undo the screws and actually take off that steel because these brackets are only accepted on slot cards. But because you've cut the fingers off, even though this is still worth more than a slot card, but now we need to remove that steel to make this a telecom grade board. It's even got nice chips on the other side. Smaller boards like this, you know, some would buy these as peripheral boards, you know, um, but. You know, just look at them, two really nice BGAs, regular flat packs, other side, even more. Virtually no rubbish, just IC chips. Um, in this case, because it's a high grade, it goes as telecom. A bit older, older style, chunkier IC chips, loaded with IC chips. Look at that side. It's even got an Intel i960. They're not the uh, CPU, uh, they're the CPU, but it's, uh, these are different gold recovery wise compared to the, the ones that actually mount into the socket. So you've got these kind of i960s, you also got a smaller i960 about, about this big. But um, because of all that, that can go telecom grade. Uh, these ones, again, we're not grading because of gold foil, they can be on mid grade boards. They don't get anyone excited. We've got heat sinks here, so it's going to be hard to grade this as telecom unless you remove them so we can see what it looks like. So we pop them off. And that's how it should be presented to me if you're expecting, you know, very high grade like telecom. Uh, in this case, these chips are actually not that crash hot for scrap. They may be great as far as removing them off the board and selling them on eBay as, as chips, but gold recovery wise, uh, there's very little. That's just a copper top. Uh, so these are worth much more than them. Uh, so, uh, but either way, I'd still pass this as a telecom because little rubbish, it's populated on both sides. And at the end, after we depopulate the whole lot, we still got a, a bit of flashing on the board we might recover. And also the fact that these, all these little chips here, these little memory modules, uh, they're all BGAs. So they're class one BGAs, high grade. So no reason why I can't pay telecom. I think I showed you this one, chunky, double-sided board. It is a telecom. It, it did come out of a telecom system. Um, but uh, yeah, so another deal. Just got to remove these heat sinks so we can see underneath the board. And usually that should pass as telecom. And it, it, it don't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's gold or whether it's just silver. It's still the same thing. Uh, we don't rate any plating on the board. Or, well, it's not even plating. But here, classic example. It's all loaded with um, aluminium heat sinks. We've got to remove all these if you want telecom grade if you leave them on they're just going to be high grade you know so but you know you're losing about three dollars a kilo so even though the chips see these uh bga chips with the silicon top they're very low value 
So, uh, you know, it even probably makes it look worse when you see these kind of chips. What we want are BGAs like that or the gold corner, like maybe this one. No, copper top. Copper tops, silicon. This one's a gold corner. So that's the real one that we want. Oh, the best one on the board anyway. Tantalum. But yeah, telecom. All right, uh, I think that's about the best I can explain telecom grade. Uh, if you're coming to me to sell boards um, over a couple of times, you know, I do allow a little bit of time to, um, you know, to explain stuff to you and, and teach, you know, help you along as you go. Uh, another example, telecom grade board because it's only populated with chips. Other side, it's even better. Two massive uh, BGA gold corners, flat packs on each side. Another little BGA there, even though a nice CCC um, tantalum capacitor, crystal oscillator, telecom. Okay, the next grade, um, above telecom, it's vintage, what I call vintage or gold chip boards. And usually I pay anywhere from $6 a kilo up to $12 a kilo. So it just depends on the board, what's on them. It can really vary, but it doesn't need to end there. It can be $14 or $15, $20 a kilo if they were absolutely fantastic military grade type of boards. But generally between $6 and $12, and they're usually either very vintage or they've you know got gold chips on top of the board. And this is the only time we really value gold on the board. It's usually what we expect inside the board. So something closer to a $6 a kilo, even though probably none of these are, these are all probably above. So here's an example of a, a gold chip board. And so obviously there's a, a CPU here. It's a, um, a Motorola board mounted CPU. So you can't just take them off. They're actually quite difficult to remove. Um, but you can desolder. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about gold on a board. It's the actual gold that we see on on top of chips. Um, it just, you know, it doesn't really indicate anything really. But um, yeah, we, we're not referring to gold plating on on actual circuit boards. Like these are vintage. You can see there's no gold plating. There's there's no real need for it. Um, and in here we've got ceramic kind of uh, um, ICs that are the white ceramic. Um, so you can see a white ceramic CPU there. So a lot of these old kind of ones have white ceramic, not a lot of gold, but it's usually because there's it's mostly platinum. Very difficult to recover these under these covers. Try and remove one. Yeah. I've got boards, I just can't find boards where I've got um, parts samples. So we've got EPROMs here, we've got uh, crystal oscillators, IC chips everywhere. Um, it's obviously vintage, there's no rubbish. And um, all these little yellow boxes, again, they're all tantalum capacitors. I've already studied them and looked them up. But um, So that's a gold top board. So this is starting at $6 a kilo. Okay. Um, this one would be about similar value. The only thing we, we really have to take off this bracket in these kind of boards, but it's a, a, again, it's a, just another Motorola CPU. It's just a little bit bigger than the first one. Um, same deal, EPROMs, IC chips, white ceramic um, ICs under them. And then probably the next step up would be something like that. Again, a smaller Motorola, all IC chips, very vintage, probably a tantalum capacitor there, this silver type. Doesn't have to be anything on the other side of the board. Um, we've got a, um, you know, kind of like the 8000 series CPU. This is what I mean by the 8000 series CPU. So they're like a long ceramic IC chip with gold tops. In this case, it's only got 10 legs. But in other cases, they can have gold tops, tin legs, 
gold tops, gold legs, and even just gold legs, and um, no gold top. <laughs> so they do vary. Here's another, virtually the same, but varies. Again, a, a similar kind of CPU. Similar up the top, but in this case, gold legs. So gold top, gold legs. This is about the highest value CPU that I still, um, that, you know, people still bring me. Um, they're about $160 a kilo. So, so in this case, on this board, this will be more closer to eight to ten dollars a kilo. Um, and then here, we've probably got um, ten dollars up to twelve dollars a kilo. Um, this one, probably more around ten dollars, you know. And um, so, we've got three motor rollers, and in this case. Some people might choose to just downgrade this board completely and turn this into a mid-grade board by removing the three CPUs and the EPROMs and the ICs. Uh, give me a second. All right. So in these ones, um, sorry, in this case, that's a board-mounted uh, CPU, so you can't just take it off. But these ones here, these are actually you can remove them. And so these go, you know, even if they're not Motorola, they're pretty much similar to a Motorola with the uh, little gold bit that goes up like that. So these go as Motorola, which I'm not really sure what I've, I think they're about, uh, about $100 a kilo. But even on the board, I don't know which one works out better. Whether you take these out and get $100 a kilo or get about $12 a kilo from me for the whole board, you know, but, uh, and if you've got patience, you're probably best off to remove these chips and actually sell them on eBay or even this whole board. But the individual chips, you're certainly gonna get probably a lot more just to a collector, let alone if they actually worked, but even a collector will get, is gonna pay a lot more than they gonna be worth for gold recovery. So always keep that in mind with, ceramic CPUs because they're not um, they're not making them anymore so they're, they're getting harder and harder to find so um, so I haven't got much of a selection here to show you most of this stuff is in my collection uh, so I didn't want to bring all that stuff out but um, you get the general idea on what we mean by gold cap chips um, or gold cap boards it's got to have gold the more of these chips on the board Sometimes you can get a whole board with just these. Um, so the more um, of these, this kind of gold, the more we're paying, not the gold that you see on the painted on the board. All right, well, that's vintage and gold chip boards. Just a very, very tiny little sample. So it could be anything. So uh, if you've got something like this, always put them aside and I'll evaluate it for you and then you can make your own mind. Okay, next up we've got slot cards. Slot cards are um, four dollars a kilo, so they're around the laptop and server boards, about the same price. So, slot cards four bucks a kilo, and can be pretty much anything as long as it's got the gold fingers and it's not totally oversized. So, all your slot cards, you can even leave this. That's okay, no problem only when it's sold as a slot card um, actually if you remove the fingers it would go as a, uh, a mid-grade board so that's another option some people just cut off the fingers and sell me the mid-grade board um, if you think it's a high grade board you can put them in with high grade after you remove the fingers but then you need to remove this bracket right because um, high grade is not with this still bracket but a mid-grade if you cut off these fingers like that, you can just sell the rest as a mid-grade board to me. Um, and for instance, something like that. If you cut off the fingers, it's never going to be high-grade because this chip is a very low-grade chip. Okay, Things like uh, uh, riser cards. Um, I think I called riser cards in the uh, when I was talking about them in mid-grade boards as riser cards. Uh, I meant backplane boards. These are more like your riser cards because they sort of slot in and uh, lift up and you can put other cards in there. So that's a riser board. Um, 
whereas the other boards that I was showing you with the gold pins, they're more a back pain board. But anyway, it doesn't make much difference. So, but these, because they're, they're riser cards with gold fingers, we can get away with putting these in slot cards. Okay, even though there's, it's, you know, quite a bit of dead weight here, certainly not worth slot card value, but because it's got gold fingers, we can sell them as, they're still slot cards. Um, and we can get even big ones like that. Gold fingers, slot cards. Gold fingers are always valued more than gold pins because it's just a easier process. A double one, more slot cards. That's about as big as a slot card um, that we can get away with. Any bigger than that, they're questioning whether it is a slot card. Just depends. Vintage ones can be even bigger than this. And we've only got a little bit of gold fingers here. So in this case, you're much better off leaving the fingers and selling it as a slot card because you're going to get better weight. Okay. Slot cards like that with these boxes, they're all right. You can put, leave them and get away with that because it's only plastic. Slot cards like that with a fan. So if it's got a little heat sink um, like that, it's only got a small heat sink. That's okay. That's acceptable as a slot card. Even though it's still only got little, little fingers, but these little heat sinks are fine. We can accept that as a slot card. When it's a heat sink with a fan, you've got to remove it. You've got to remove this whole thing. Okay. It's not acceptable as a slot card or anything. So we expect you to move it like that, if you can. And when you've got big heat sinks, and sometimes the heat sinks are giant and they've got fans as well. Even if they don't have fans, these really big ones, you should really remove them because uh, it's just a little bit too much. Um, one or two don't matter, but when you've got a whole stack of um, slot cards with all these on them, uh, they look really bad. Um, even that, that's too big for the size of that slot card. That's another nice slot card. It's got a really nice NVIDIA um, chip on that. I mean, that's all mostly just copper, the weight and that. But it does have BGAs all around. Fingers up the top. Slot card. All right, so that's slot cards, $4 a kilo. Okay, down to the smaller items. Um, we're still going down the same list, so just remember if you want to see the complete list just uh, Down the bottom of the video. You'll see a link to the page where I've got my prices So the next one is slot CPUs nine dollars a kilo um, So this is basically what we mean by a slot CPU a Pentium 2 or Pentium 3 uh, Slot card that's actually the CPU. Normally it's got the aluminium heatsink and the black black plastic shielding over it. So you've got to remove all that. This is what we buy when we're talking about uh, slot CPUs, $9. Um, also, uh, these are CPUs. I mean, they're not slot CPUs because they don't have gold fingers. So they don't actually slot in. Well, they are, but they don't slot in that way. They slot in through this part here. But uh, as you can see, they're mostly MLCCs from usually uh, power PCs, G5s, Apples. So most of this is from Apples. Um, and uh, yeah, so here's another one there. So these all go under slot CPUs. So sometimes they can be a little bit confusing. People will just throw these into mid-grade boards thinking that they're not much. But if it's the main CPU out of, this, uh, that, out of the PC that you're taking it, then this is a slot CPU, even though it doesn't have actual slots um, so they all go under the same category here's another one with slots just to give you a few examples and this one well technically I'm not sure if it is or not but um, it's got all the characteristics of a slot CPU CPU gold fingers we can call this a slot CPU that's slot CPUs this little tray here all right, so next up we've got, we're going on to RAM. And the first one is obviously RAM Gold, $15 a kilo. And that's basically what we mean by RAM Gold. So it's just clean RAM with gold fingers. And it don't matter whether they're BGA chips or regular IC chips, 
they all go under the same grade $15 a kilo uh, next one is uh, Ram Bus $6 a kilo so basically it's pretty much exactly like a regular gold ram except it's got the aluminium shielding over the outside come in all kinds of colors so you can increase the value of these by removing all the metal and cleaning up the ram stick there's uh, glue underneath you clean them up and you bring them back up to normal ram um, you get $15 a kilo but as this six dollars a kilo all right and the next two are ram with uh, no fingers so you've cut off the fingers or silver or tin whichever way you want to call them fingers three dollars and fifty kilo so there's your um your tin ram So three dollars fifty a kilo. All ram that's had the fingers cut off. Same thing. Three dollars fifty a kilo. That's that one. All right. That was ram. Move on to some uh, CPUs. We'll get onto the IC chips, and we'll just about be done. Okay, next up we've got ceramic CPUs and I'm not going to uh, do a whole list of every individual CPU. Basically, I pay anywhere between $23 a kilo and $160 a kilo. So, um, we're talking about ceramic CPUs only. So, normally they've got the ceramic on the base. So, yeah, anywhere between $23 and $160. If you want the actual breakdown of individual cpus down the bottom click on that link and you'll see the complete price list of all these cpus broken down and individually priced so ceramic can be your regular your regular pentium ceramics you got cyrix with uh, gold caps so obviously they're going to be more valuable um, 486s one of the most valuable there's a little Motorola regular Pentium so there you go so a whole different variety so that that's a Motorola from the board um, it's you know a board mounted CPU and as you can see in this case the um, it's just been ripped off but yeah still that can still go as a Motorola um, regular CPU there you go 23 to up to 160 check out the list and you'll see them prices individually so next up are the ones that I I will show you in separate uh, firstly the next step down from ceramic CPUs is uh, the black fiber CPU so I'm paying $29 a kilo so that's a black fiber CPU it's all black some are shiny some are flat black fiber only $29 a kilo but they need to be sorted out um, and separated you know uh, okay so that was black fiber next one is um, green green and brown fiber $12 a kilo no metal there's your brown fibers and as you can see there's no metal on the top it's just mostly plastic and a bit of silicon on the end same as your green fiber no metal so they're the ones that we pay $12 a kilo $12 a 
$12 a kilo. Brown fiber, same deal, $12 a kilo. All right, now, then we just go down to the more regular common CPUs that most scrappers are finding today. Um, so we've got the green fiber Pentium 4 with pins, with metal. So all this kind of stuff. Very common these days. So you've got the metal backs and the pins. Uh, green fiber with the copper. That's what we're talking about with pins. If you remove this copper um, heat spreader, you turn it into a regular green fiber. So you, you can get your value for your copper and then still increase the value by turning it into a regular fibre simply by taking the copper heatsink off. So that's green, uh, sorry, wrong page. A green fibre, Pentium 4 with pins, with metal. And the last ones, which is the most common, are the pinless CPUs. They're only $6 a kilo. That's a uh, just your regular common Pentium 4, Pentium D, um, modern style pinless CPU. Now what I recommend with these is read the backs. You know, if they're quad core, i3, i5, i7, you should be selling them on eBay or testing them out to see if they work and sell them on eBay. Usually they're pretty durable, even if you handle them, they're still good. So if there are i3 and above, you should always look to sell them before going to scrap because you're only going to get like 20 cents, 25 cents each for these scrap value, whereas you could get, you know, $20 for an i5. So always look to see if you can sell the CPU. Scrapping them, selling them as um, gold recovery is, is your last resort, okay? Because we're just basing it, the price mostly on the copper, okay? So as you can see, it's $6 a kilo, that's the price, well it's a little bit more than what the copper is actually worth, because this is tinned copper, it's not clean, pure copper, and obviously the labour, and the gold pins, or this gold foil, you know, it is gold plating, but it's, you know, takes a lot to, uh, to get any real gold out of them, so that's why they're, they're really not, not worth a great deal, so always look to sell them first, and then you know, if you can't sell them or you don't, you know, you really don't want to sell them, throw them in a bucket, $6 a kilo. Okay, IC chips next. Next on the list is IC chips. And the first of the IC chips are just dips, $8 a kilo. And so they're your, your basic regular IC chips. They can be a mixture of uh, plastic and also ceramic type CPUs, okay? And so a mix of IC chips, sorry, did I say CPUs? I meant IC chips, $8 a kilo. Um, the other IC chips that you can separate, there are a couple, is they're also DIPs, but they're from RAM or just general memory, $13 a kilo. So, for example, that's all depopulated from RAM sticks. And so, these kind of RAM sticks here. And it's just in my opinion that the memory chips, the little RAM chips, are um, a pretty good, even grade of um, IC chips. So, that's why I pay more. Um, some places just buy IC chips and don't have any other grades but uh, yeah so the IC chips just out of RAM or say for instance you've got a hard drive hard drive board if you depopulate hard drives this uh, this IC chip here that's that's the memory chip there they're, they're the ones that I'm talking about or obviously on RAM the same kind of deal otherwise if they're just regular IC chips then they're just $8 a kilo. 
All right. The next step are um, flat packs. What I call flat packs, eleven dollars a kilo. So they're just basically regular IC chips with legs four sides. So that's a good example. Four-sided legs, flat pack. Technically, they could be called anything else, but just for argument's sake, we just um, call them flat packs. All right. So flat packs, eleven dollars a kilo. Next ones are also IC chips, but they're EEPROMs. They've got the glass window. So in this case, silver, $8 a kilo. Some people don't separate them. If you do separate them, you'll get a little bit more for the gold ones. So basically with the little glass windows, EEPROMs, removable that we um, take off boards. If you, you can't see gold, it's just a silvery color. It's eight dollars a kilo. If you want to separate the ones with the gold, then then I can um, pay thirteen dollars a kilo for just the ones with, that you can actually see gold. But you need to separate them. If you just bring them all mixed, then it's just going to be assumed that they're just regular um, mixed eight dollars a kilo. Because I'm certainly not going to be sorting out um, the chips for you. <laughs> Because uh, if you add everything up and trying to sort things for people, it just I can spend two hours just sorting out thirty or forty dollars worth of e-waste. So it's just too time-consuming to um, do that. Okay, so we we've done the basic IC chips and flat packs, and now we've got the four grades of BGA chips. So grade one, these are my grades. So, but I call uh, grade one eighty dollars a kilo. Uh, basically once again ram bga chips so the bgas obviously they've got the little balls underneath ball grid array so these are the clean ones say for instance off ram sticks once you depopulate them they create the highest grade bga also just regular BC bgas off uh, circuit boards you notice that these are just clean they don't have the excess um, plastic on the outside or the gold corner these are grade one because they've just got less rubbish than the other ones but not much so if you separate these clean BGAs on their own no metal $80 a kilo that's them the next ones are grade two BGAs Usually north-south bridge type BGA chips with the gold corner. They're $70 a kilo, so not much less. And that's them here. So basically, gold corner, um, BGA. And you can see the excess plastic on the outside. So that's, you know, where you can see the gold corner, that's the part that makes it just that worth that a little bit less. But um, otherwise, if you remove this top off the the plastic that actually probably be even more than the class ones but anyway that's them seventy dollars a kilo uh, the third ones are the BGA with the metal tops they're only ten dollars a kilo so a big drop and uh, the reason is obviously the metal tops so most very common to see the moon shape top well that's all copper plastic around it very little bonding wires it's mostly in the I'll give you an example as you can see inside it's just tin plated copper and it's just very light plated and um, the that's not ceramic the black part that's just plastic and in some cases there are bonding wires inside but not really it's mostly on this part there so in this case this is a very basic one sometimes they're really good but so that's why we grade these much lower at only um, ten dollars a kilo even though they are BGA's and so you see them on the board and then so it's very common to see that on the board round copper top 
as you can see this has been removed off the uh, BGA part and there's really nothing apart from some silicon there so that's why these even though you can see the gold corner these ones you know are not the high value BGAs but they're still good enough to be worth ten dollars a kilo same as these kind it's just one solid copper top piece BGA all these metal top ones don't matter how heavy or thick round gold corner chips ten dollars a kilo okay and then grade four BGAs which is uh, the lowest grade of BGAs are the fiber silicon ones they're only one dollar a kilo and they're actually worth less removing them from the board because most of the boards that they're on are either mid-grade or high-grade so um, but it's done on purpose because there's no point in even depopulating these off the boards you devalue the board and you're not getting any real value as far as gold recovery and that's these ones here so they're BGA this one probably uh, not but as you can see um, that little square on the top so it's very common you see these chips on boards that's just silicon it's very little um, precious metals that we can really easily recover um, maybe in future we can recover the silicon or um, there might be traces of silver and platinum inside who knows <laughs> but gold recovery wise there's really very very little and so it's not even worth taking these off the boards but if you do take them off the boards if you completely depopulate your circuit boards and you just happen to have them okay i'll buy them but uh yeah just to let you know that there's no value in these kind really so i only pay a dollar a kilo i prefer uh, that you just left them on the boards and hopefully we get a little bit more for your boards all right so that's all the chips and i'll just move across here finish this part off uh, the next thing we got is uh, tantalum capacitors yellow so if you sort out your um, tantalum capacitors I pay $20 a kilo just for the yellow ones right and so you can recognize your tantalum capacitors very these are your SMD yellow they've got a the little uh, brown little strip on them you just need to uh, look up SMD tantalum capacitors and you'll see what they look like online but that's them there $20 a kilo and um, also sorted are the black ones they're a little bit less $17 a kilo and the reason is because I find that usually they're not 100% tantalum capacitors people mix diodes in with them that look like black tantalum capacitors so they have to be a little bit less just to make up for the fact that um, I really don't get 100% strike rate with the um, tantalum capacitors that people bring to me and the other ones are the epoxy resin dipped ones um, I don't have a sample here right now and uh, the battery's running out so I don't have time to go and get them but the epoxy dipped vintage different types I also pay $20 a kilo for um, there are some that I will pay more if they're separated out like the the red CCC cap uh, tantalums or uh, silver ones but um, aside from the black and yellow SMD type it starts to get very complicated um, but so mostly I prefer to just buy these these ones here uh, next on the list our MLCCs currently I'm paying $14 a kilo for MLCCs a lot of my prices uh, will fluctuate time to time sometimes I get better samples of results um, and uh, so sometimes prices can go up quite a bit but at the moment $14 a kilo MLCCs and um, it, they would be higher but the problem as you know is uh, people mix in uh, inductors and other things that look like MLCCs especially the real small ones but um, yeah okay then 
Finally, we got crystals and crystal oscillators. I pay $4 a kilo. It's mostly only for silver recovery. So crystals, you have your uh, tiny little small ones off pretty much all kinds of circuit boards, especially computer motherboards and stuff like that. So they're crystals. These are also crystals. You don't have to sort these two out. These are the long ones. I prefer if they are, but if they're, but there's no difference in price. They're also four dollars a kilo, and also these crystal oscillators, which are usually four uh, four pins on the end. They can be the long boxy type. Sometimes you'll get gold plated ones underneath. You can separate them, um, but generally, that's crystal oscillators, either long uh, rectangles little round ones tiny little ones they're all your crystal oscillators four dollars a kilo and the only variation to crystal oscillators are in price are the ceramic SMD um, crystal oscillators forty five dollars a kilo so uh, eleven times more in value from your regular crystals and crystal oscillators are the ceramic SMD these ones here so you can see they're um, they're very small very flat they sit on top of boards you'll see them on uh, mounted onto a board uh, it's just like a gold band and underneath that's uh, four legs and it's ceramic and so they're a little bit like a CPU um, in, as far as materials. And so these little things certainly takes some time to, um, to accumulate a, a, quite a bit of them. But, you know, if you're picking things off boards, boards that you would normally sell for $3 a kilo, well, you know, you're turning them into $45 a kilo. So that's um, food for thought. All right, so we're done all with all the crystal oscillators, and here we've got uh, gold pins, partial plated, so it's most of the pins that we find in, um, you know, like um, um, ribbon wire and stuff like that, those uh, long blue and black pins, usually it's all partially plated, so... There will be a mixture of fully plated, obviously, but uh, it's mostly just the uh, metal, the base metal, and, you know, no, you're not going to really be able to see that, but most of the pins are just very lightly plated. Uh, some of them are, are just tip plated. Um, very light. Some are heavier, but, so uh, yeah, that's what we call partially plated gold pins. About $7 a kilo really depends on the pins all pins are a little bit different and how many you got and so on and then we've got fully plated but uh still reasonably light 17 dollars a kilo so that's um basically what fully plated is um just from uh basic modern electronics nothing spectacular um certainly nothing vintage in here or high-end $17 a kilo now I don't think I've got sample of uh, the next one I've actually I think I'm yeah I think I'm missing one it's another grade on top of that these are light fully plated but I've also got a heavy fully plated vintage uh, grade that it's quite a bit more you'll just have to uh, find it on the list but just for example, CPUs, when they, um, you remove the pins off CPUs and you get the very fine, if they're clean and they don't have all this black stuff in there, they can go as a, a, a much higher grade than this. And also if it's vintage, uh, fully plated pins, sometimes they can go for quite a bit more. But generally, um, it's modern light plated stuff around $17 a kilo at the moment but 
prices can um, go up or down quite soon. And uh, anyway, gold jacks and audio video. This is uh, quite low recovery. You see these on circuit boards and so on. You just your video jacks, different kinds of connector jacks. Very, very um, diverse in the the thickness of the plating. Um, it's very heavy stuff because you know. Remember, we're only talking about um, gold plating on the outside, and some of this plating is very light, and inside it's just plastic and yeah, very hard to recover this sort of stuff. Um, it's very heavy for what you get. So, but still you get five bucks a kilo. And the ones that I don't buy are uh, gold plated jacks like that. They got mostly the plastic with the gold. What you do with these, you cut this part off with a pair of pliers or something, side cutters, and then you can throw it into your, these kind of jacks. But you've got to remove this plastic stuff and um, we just want the gold plated part. So I don't generally buy these kind of ones unless you clean that part off and then we'll just go in there and uh, finally we've got gold fingers clean uh, well trimmed gold fingers so that's uh, a, what's considered a well trimmed gold finger you can't see much of the circuit board above there um, you know, sometimes they can, you know, showing a little bit of green, very little. Usually both are always, um, majority of the bag should always be double-sided and no gaps. Sometimes you'll find, um, don't know if there's a sample right here, but sometimes you'll find um, boards that uh, have got a lot of gaps, like you see that board there. That's not too bad, but sometimes there can only be like one or two bits on that side and one or two bits on that side. If there's a lot of that, so here's another example. So you, it doesn't look too bad there, but on the other side, there's really nothing. So if there's a lot more of that than just your regular double-sided, then it, it's going to be downgraded a bit. Or, and if you combine, if the um, board hasn't been cleaned off, you know, there's too much green, then it's... It's a, it's a lower grade. We pay $70 a kilo for the good, clean, double-sided. If there's too much one-sided, too many gaps, or it's not very well trimmed, you know, it's going to be downgraded to $40 a kilo. And, and it just really depends on that. You know, if there's a big chunks of board on there, obviously we can't pay, you know, we're, we're paying for the gold fingers, not for the actual circuit board. All right, so that covers that. Um, I don't think we've got anything else apart from, uh, I don't know if anyone still uh, takes out keyboard silver mylars, but I do buy them at $3 a kilo, only because uh, well, silver is not much at the moment, so yeah, they're only $3 a kilo, they come out of your keyboards, uh, we recover a bit of silver, just make sure that the, the blank page that's in the middle of the two is always taken out, and... Yeah, and that's it, and $3 a kilo. Uh, the only other couple of things that I don't have on hand are, I buy CD drives, because some people bring me a box of CD drives, so I just buy them for 25 cents a kilo. Um, you know, you, but yeah, if you want to bring them, you can, but it's up to you. Um, most people just prefer to just scrap them out, take the boards out and throw the rest into scrap metal, take a bit of brass out and hard drives I also buy hard drives dollar a kilo you'll see that on the list as well so once again if you want to know all these uh, prices or uh, the whole list of the prices they're all on that link below so click on that I hope that gives you a bit of an idea on the boards that I buy and all the stuff that I buy uh, so if you're living in Melbourne and you're a scrapper and you want to get rid of some of your e-waste bits um, or you just want to start accumulating this sort of stuff well now you know um, what I'm paying for the stuff and uh, and there you go all right guys well hope that was for a bit of fun for you and uh, keep scrapping and I'll catch you next time soon with um, 
some more scraping videos anyway. Catch you next time.